Hi, I'm Annie Musgrove and I'm just finishing the last part of the botanical drawing lesson I've been having on my own this morning. Um, you can see I've had a twig um, that's got a catkin and a leaf form on it and I have taken you through in a few sessions how to do the shade in the twig form and how to do the catkin. So the last bit to do are the leaf, um, the le little cluster of leaves on one of the twigs that I've we, in a previous session we sort of mapped out and I have tidied that up so that I'm really happy with the position of all the leaves. So I'm just going to move this now so it doesn't make me feel sick and so you can see what I'm doing and I can chat to you. So I'm going to, because the leaf is quite delicate and um, I don't want to have it kind of such a heavy form. So what I've done is I very faintly with my H pencil, hardly pressing at all, I've marked on um, where the little veins are on the inside of the leaf that I can see and you can see that like slightly you know how they fit together so the my little veins sort of form um, a V they're kind of on this particular leaf they're kind of fairly opposite each other so have a little look at the shape of those and also my leaves are a bit more complicated and maybe yours aren't but mine have got the points turned over so I've put those points on to remind me where they are and the the inside of the leaf on my leaf is darker than the outside of the leaf um, so that's something that we can kind of keep in mind and this leaf has got the outside of the leaf turned over um, so it's like clustered and closed up and I've got another little bit of leaf that's lying underneath the, the twig to add to complications so you just think you pick the simplest twig out of the garden and, and then there are loads of complications when you look at it in loads of detail but it doesn't really matter you have your own style of doing things your own way of doing things and the whole point is just to have fun observing the detail of nature and getting it down onto your page so I'm going to use the H pencil or if you've got a 2H pencil and I'm going to start with the darkest parts first um, so I'm going to start with the inside of one of my leaves. Um, I'm just going to put some shading on really lightly to show that. Really, really lightly. I'm not going to do the bit where it's turned over because that is going to end up being lighter. So really light shading is going to go on to my leaf. There we go seems a bit dark and then I'm going to use my end of my matchstick um, to spread that and smudge it in so I've shaded in my leaf but I've left the end of my leaf turned over now I have to look really carefully and see where this leaf is at its darkest um, unfortunately it's also fine it's hard to kind of rub out where the, where the veins are and ideally if you had a really fine rubber you could do that afterwards but that's kind of even this fine rubber with a bit of a point on is not going to be fine enough to be able to do that so we might have to just cheat on that and draw in the veins on top I know they're whiter on my leaf and they really are, but it's just not possible when they're so faint um, to do it any other way. So I am going to just draw them in with my very sharp point of my H pencil. So you get the idea that it is the leaf. And I'm looking at where it is darkest. It is darkest actually around the rim of the leaf and underneath that bit that's turned over. So a bit of a cheat going on here. Um, to make sure we know this is a leaf and not just a, a blob um, and then there's a tiny little bit of texture on my leaf some little rust marks so I'm going to put a few little dots on where they exist to give a bit of interest to that leaf so there we go and I'm going to have to I am going to have to put a very faint mark for the top of my leaf but I am going to leave the turned over bit um, white so I've done one leaf, I'm going to work on to the next leaf, similar principle really, I'm going to shade it in. 
this leaves a bit easier for me to see because it is distinctly darker as it goes into where all the leaves um, join up. So I can I can definitely show that easier than on the other leaves. So where it joins the stem is actually much darker. It's a question of looking really. And not making it all too dark and too heavy. You can always add add more pencil marks. You can take them away, of course, obviously, by um by rubbing them out. So again, I've put on a few pencil marks, I've got it darker where it joins the stem. I'm going to use my matchstick to blend it and um, spread it to the bits that are a bit lighter. Now they, okay. I'm going to leave the tip just the same, the tip white where it um, tips over, over the leaf. And I'm just going to have a very faint outline to that leaf with my sharp, very sharp H pencil. Um, leave that tip over and then when one leaf goes over another I am going to put a little line otherwise it'd be impossible to see where one leaf starts and another one um, ends okay so I've got it darker this time going into the stem and again I'm going to look carefully and see the direction of the vein and put that on with a very sharp H pencil and make a few marks to show the where the minor veins are. Okay. So I've got this stem going on again. I'm going to use a sharp pencil, H pencil to distinct put a line to distinguish it from the leaf that's underneath, otherwise it'll all blur in together. And then I'm going to give it a shading. Again, this is a bit easier because I can see very clearly where it's dark and where it's light. I'm just going to shade the dark bits first and then I'm going to use my little blending stick, my matchstick, um, to spread it to the lighter bits. Otherwise I'm in danger of the whole thing just getting darker and darker and heavier and heavier. So again, really lightly, oh dear, that was a bit of an accident, that's some of the dangers, all falling over and then everything changes, don't move your head. And try not to move your twig. So again, I'm going to make this faint, very faint marks to shade it in, shade in the shape of it, and then I will um, spread it with my little spreading stick. There we go. So that way, I'm going to build it all up. Now, if you had any, I have to confess, if you had any of this graphite powder, it would make life I'm not really easier because you just have this powder and you put it on your stick and you spread it around and it gives you a base colour. Um, you can make this by sharpening a like old pencil and making graphite and grinding it all up with a pestle and mortar. But I'm purposely not using this because I know you won't necessarily have this at home. But if you did have some graphite powder, um, it would make this putting this graphite on a lot easier for you. But I say you could make your own graphite powder. I did consider doing that, but it was such a faff grinding it all up. I thought, no, we'll just go with the basics and um, use a pencil. There's something quite pleasurable about just putting on the marks with a pencil. Okay, so actually this interior leaf of mine is actually quite dark um, and it distinguishes itself from the one underneath because that one's quite light but you'll have to look at your leaves and see where is it dark and where is it light uh, and shade accordingly right so again I'm going to use my little spreading stick and spread it around And this, there's quite a lot of variation on this one um, because you can 
that's because it's the back of the leaf you can see where the veins are so you can show that by just careful shading you just have to follow what you're doing okay so shade it a bit darker these are really really gentle marks just building up the graphite little bit by little bit rather than a great big mark um, so it's starting to get a pattern I've got a pattern on mine so that's quite fun but you can see the pattern with the back of the leaf uh, just gradually building that shading up to show that pattern okay so you can see that starting to build up there Right, and then the leaf underneath is really pale, so I'm just going to do that one as lightly as I can. There's hardly any pencil marks on it at all. Um, and then I'll begin. I'll use my little matchstick to spread it. So I've just basically coloured that one in. That one is there. around there so I'm doing these all quite quickly to give you the idea about looking for variation in the leaves and looking really carefully at what you can see um, I'm going to make a distinction now between the curled up leaf and the leaf behind by putting quite a hard pencil mark on following its shape um, and then building that up you might have to exaggerate that shading a little bit we're not using colour here, we're just using black and white, so that needs a bit of exaggeration on the shading there to separate those two. And then again, I've got this one behind to try and show it's very complicated. You only need two leaves for it to get complicated. Um, left click, show that one behind. Just draw what that was in, in front of you, really. There we go. Now gradually building these up and then there's another one here I've got underneath where there's a really very dark, distinct dark line of a shadow going on. I can put that in with my pencil and then the rest is just shaded. There we go. Again spread it with your spreading stick. Because the leaf has got kind of quite a smooth texture, so I want to kind of exaggerate that. Okay, I'm going to leave you to have a go at your leaves. Um, so the key point of the leaves is start really, really gentle. Use like a hardish pencil, like a 2H or an H, and just put a tiny bit of graphite on and start spreading it with your matchstick. And then look for some texture to help you identify that it's a leaf um, and start building that into your shading so, and look out for where any leaves are turned over um, you can leave that white you're going to have to like work out where one leaf starts and another one ends or one ends another one starts show you show that quite clearly so I'm going to keep working on that doing more spreading, adding little bits more texture and then I'll come back and show you the finished result. So crack on with that and I'll do the last bit. I'll just do a quick show of what I've been doing. Good luck.